we believe come from uh, places where the COVID-19 and the new variant is present and is rapidly contaminating people. On the 28th, uh, hopefully, we will be meeting again and we can see what we will have. We have to be very uh, informed of the situation. It is, I said, evolving in, in well, in Britain, it is a, a full-blown one. Dito naman sa iba is uh, meron lang one or two or three. So, we will um, calibrate our response depending on the severity and the tama nila. If, 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 the, if, the, if they are hit uh, severely and there's a spike now, uh, we might uh, consider everybody coming from, yes, ma'am. Mr. President, good evening po. We just like po to, ano, una, I feel very heartened po, continuously hearing the importance of surveillance. As someone from the Epidemiology Bureau, napakahalaga po talaga, no, na ang surveillance, siya yung nakakahanap ng sakit. Pero ngayon na wala pa pong bakuna, ang importansya niya ay yung nabanggit niyo po na saan ang pagtaas at bakit po tumataas. At pag dumating po ang COVID vaccine, ang surveillance po magsasabi sa inyo kung effective po, no, yung bakuna natin at nakaka-detect po siya ng mga adverse events para alam natin kailangan bang itigil ang pagbabakuna. Pero i-level up po natin siya and I think that's what Dr. Jamie is saying. The biosurveillance or genetic sequencing, hindi naman po kailangan lahat kasi una, it's really expensive and there should be targeted population. At ang una po natin ay yung mga galing UK, ikalawa po, siguro sampling po ng mga hindi po galing UK pero galing po sa ibang bansa. Kasi po, hindi natin alam eh, baka yung Hong Kong, ngayon lang po kasi sila nade-detect, pero we don't know. Baka makita na rin po sa ibang bansa yung mga bagong variant na to or iba pa pong variant. At yung nabanggit nga ni Dr. Jimmy, dito po targeted ang sampling natin. Sino yung may pagtaas, sino yung nagka-cluster, kesyo community po yan, workplace or jails, yun pong mga, um, kung may mga mataas no, na kaso ng severe disease or pagkamatay. At yung huli po, sir, ngayon ang dami na kasi nating kaso na hindi na natin alam saan galing eh. So, hindi ko alam kung kuha siya sa trabaho, sa public transportation. Kailangan, siguro, sampling ang term namin, no? Hindi lahat, pero maliit na porsyento para lang malaman natin saan kaya nang gagaling, no? Sino yung sources of infection at anong setting. Mahalaga po yun sa ekonomiya natin. Kung nakikita natin ang source of infection pala matitrace bako sa workplace, then we know we need to do something sa workplace or sa jails po siya or sa healthcare facility. And that's something that the DOH along with the other agencies will prepare para alam natin ilan to at magkano po yung magagastas natin para po sa biosurveillance na ipapropose po natin. Thank you, Mr. President. Can you comment on it? Uh, yes, I uh, support uh, the uh, manifestation of uh, the EB representative, Dr. De Guzman. Uh, we should really strengthen uh, in general rather than uh, in specific terms the biosurveillance capacity and uh, in particular the genomic sequencing capacity. Because as correctly pointed out, the uh, mutation uh, is not just limited to UK. It is. Uh, it can happen uh, everywhere. In fact, no. So uh, it's best to uh, really uh, characterize uh, these new strains because it will influence uh, to a certain degree uh, our pandemic response. No. Uh, so it is uh, uh, crucial that the biosurveillance capacity be ramped up, uh, and uh, that is why. In the number three recommendation, which I think uh, deserves an amendment, no? warrants an amendment, which is not just limiting it to travelers uh, from UK, but really biosurveillance in as a whole 
the capacity uh, 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 strengthening. Yun lang po, Mr. President. May na ano ako. Nawala sa isip ko eh. Kasi pag uwi ko dyan sa bahay ko, nagdumating ako kanina, nagbakasyon man lahat, cook, pati lahat. Nang naiman yung kwardya lang. Walang luto nga. Problema pa sana ako magkain. Order na siguro pa ako ng ano. Yes, uh, actually tama yan. Uh, uh, just uh, to think about it, ponder, then uh, we will uh, know on the 28 whether we are uh, uh, taking that course correctly. Sinva. Yes, ma'am. You want to. Uh, she's, uh, I would like to acknowledge, uh, Mr. President, with your permission. Dr. Uh, Sanya Carlos, head of the RITM. Good evening. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Uh, proposed amendment, sir, for number three. Uh, we wish to amend that uh, only PCR positive samples be referred for sequencing because it is not useful just to send samples if they are not PCR positive. So uh, it will waste a lot of resources. So proposed amendment is only PCR positive samples will be sent to either the Philippine Genome Center, the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine, or the UPNIH. This has been discussed among us earlier. Thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, we agree with the, uh, I agree with the uh, proposed amendment to uh, specifically uh, state that only positive uh, PCR uh, test results, uh, a, uh, a uh, equivalent uh, swab uh, be uh, submitted for uh, genomic uh, sequencing. So may the record show that uh, he, uh, he proposed uh, amendment is accepted and the original recommendation modified as such. Yes, uh, Secretary Gibaro. Mr. President, uh, I, I would just like to add a fourth uh, recommendation. And, uh, uh, well, based on our discussions earlier, one very significant thing that I noted was the uh, observation that this new COVID-19 virus has not yet reached Philippine shores. So I guess that uh, our main priority at this time is to ensure that this new virus strain will not enter Philippine territory. So uh, with that, uh, Mr. President, uh, last December 15, you issued an executive order further strengthening our border controls through the adoption of the Advanced Passenger Information System. However, that has not yet been actually implemented because implementing rules and regulations have to be formulated within 16 days from effectivity by the Bureau of Immigration and other relevant government agencies. This uh, system, Mr. President, will authorize the Bureau of Immigration to obtain advanced information from various airlines and carriers about the origin of their individual passengers, their originating flight, their connecting flight, their transit flight, and so uh, uh, many other relevant information. Uh, this will serve not only to address security risks, but also health risks. So uh, what I am proposing, Mr. President, is that uh, we implement this advanced passenger information system immediately. Although uh, the Bureau of Immigration and other relevant agencies have been given 60 days from effectivity to come up with implementing rules and regulations, 
may I suggest that in view of the urgency of the situation, that uh, the period within which to come up with this IRR uh, be uh, shortened uh, in view of the, of the urgency of the situation. So as soon as the uh, implementing rules and regulations are in place, Mr. President, we can uh, immediately uh, put this into operation and uh, health risks that may be associated with passengers coming from not only the UK, but also from other infected countries may be properly addressed even before the passenger boards the flight coming to the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, well, that would add on a burden to the people uh, from uh, whose country the plane is uh, carrying the passengers. So, yung short, you want it shortened? We just want, uh, well, to uh, uh, direct, if, if you may, uh, the, the uh, Bureau of Immigration and the implement, other implementing agencies to come up with the IRR as soon as possible so that we can address this problem immediately. Because we don't know if at any time, baka po may makalusot. You have an ideal time there? Well, mm -hmm. uh, we can probably shorten it to 20 to 30 days. Mr. Well, yes, uh, we'll just go direct uh, to, a, to an order. The Secretary of, uh, Executive Secretary would order, the, we pass on the order that uh, they shorten it. Yes. We, in view of uh, the emergency, the crisis. Hirap kasi yung makikita natin tapos wala na tayo. 28 pa naman. So, before we end, I'd like to address myself to the people, to the nation, that we are indebted by the presence of uh, the following persons who contribute a lot to what we have discussed and we Im to improve now. Si Dr. Marisa Alejandria, then we have Dr. Mark Edsel IS, then Dr. Celia Carlos, Dr. Altia de Guzman, Dr. Rolando Enrique, Dr. Nina Gloriana, Dr. Teodoro Herbosa, Dr. Jaime Montoya, uh, familiar name, Dr. Ana Lisa T. Ong Lim, Dr. Cynthia Palme Saloma, and Dr. Mario Panaligan. Mga kapatid kong Pilipino, ito yung mga tao na tumutulong sa kibinasa ko. Uh, huwag ninyo makalimutan baka yung iba tatakbo ng senador. At least uh, alam na ninyo kung sino yung mga pangalan. Ulitin ko ulit ito. Uh, but we have, you know, we have with us uh, in this meeting Filipino doctors who are really concerned with the welfare of their countrymen. They are here to help us out because we are not the medical persons. They contribute and we just listen and implement uh, in more ways than one the recommendations. So maraming pasalamat ako sa kanila and to the kayong lahat mga Pilipino wala pa namang bakuna kasi mayroon tayong pera wala nang problema we have the money we can buy problem is of supply kaya maghintay tayo kasi una nila the countries who manufactured the vaccines uh, situate that ang nauna yung kanila bago tayo which is natural and uh, that is a uh, uh, natural of human being. 
parang yung kadugo niya muna ang mauna, mga anak nila. So, we'll just wait. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, General Galvez uh, is there. At uh, wag kayong maniwala dyan sa mga ano-ano na mga vaccine coming in. in, in. Wala yan. Ang tawag niyan, istorya lang yan. <laughs> so, maraming salamat sa lahat ninyo, doctors, at uh, magandang gabi sa inyo lahat. Yeah.